Now, is John Williams' soundtrack for Indiana Jones a lot better than the Top Gun soundtrack? Probably, maybe, who knows? But if you ask me which one I prefer, it's Top Gun, baby, all the way. <laughs> Welcome to Film Fights, where we don't just talk about movies, we make them fight. And today, we're doing our first episode in our 80s action movie tournament bracket that doesn't include Arnold Schwarzenegger. We finally made it. I was about to say. But don't worry. I'll be back. I got a couple of announcements that uh, I have to say before we get into Indiana Jones Raiders Lost Ark versus Top Gun. But if you don't care about that, you want to get right into the discussion, I get it. Have timestamps down below. Go to where you need to go. However... If you're a fan of the channel, stick around. First order of business. We have finally decided, or you have finally decided, which bracket we're going to be going with for our 80s action movie tournament. We are going with bracket B, the action subgenre bracket. Basically, we're going with the bracket where we're doing more of an apples to apples comparison with different types of action movies in a particular genre. The benefit of this is that we can determine which movie is the best movie in each action subcategory before we determine the greatest action of the 1980s. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to say real quick is thanks everyone who watched our last video. It got almost 900 views as at the time of recording, which is way more than we've ever got before on our channel. Uh, that means a lot to me. And we also almost doubled our subscriber account, which is pretty impressive considering that most of our subscribers are my family members. So uh, that's really cool too. Thank you all so much. I would really enjoy if you guys commented down below and liked the video and subscribed. It really helps us because we're a small channel and I would like to do this for as long as I possibly could. And your comments mean the world. I always love reading them and I'll always respond to them. That's a fact. That's the things I wanted to say real quick. Now let's get in to Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark versus Top Gun. Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark, directed by Steven Spielberg and released in 1981, is a thrilling adventure film that set the standard for action-packed storytelling. It was written by Lawrence Kasdan, George Lucas, and Philip Kaufman. The movie follows intrepid archaeologist Indiana Jones, played by Harrison Ford, as he travels the globe to find the legendary Ark of the Covenant before the Nazis can obtain its divine powers. Set in the 1930s, Jones faces perilous traps, fierce enemies, and an old flame in his quest to prevent the powerful biblical artifact from falling into the wrong hands, combining action, history, and mysticism in a timeless cinematic journey. Top Gun, directed by Tony Scott and released in 1986, is an iconic action drama film written by Jim Cash and Jack Epps Jr. The movie stars Tom Cruise as Pete Maverick Mitchell, a daring and talented fighter pilot who is sent to the United States Navy's elite fighter weapons school, Top Gun, to refine his flying skills. Competing against the best in the Navy, Maverick's reckless attitude and cocky demeanor puts him at odds with the other pilots, including his cool collected rival, Iceman. Amid intense aerial dog fights and high-speed flight training, Maverick must confront his deepest fears and personal demons spurred by a tragic loss and his developing romance with his astrophysics instructor. Top Gun captures the adrenaline and excitement of naval aviation set to a memorable soundtrack that underscores the film's themes of courage, rivalry, and redemption. For round one, we have narrative in pacing, which is worth a total of 10 points. I think the thing that I appreciate about Raiders is that it's really well paced. It starts off with this sort of suspense build up to Indiana Jones as a character. And then it shows him, you know, running from like a boulder, which is a very iconic scene in the movie, obviously jumping into a plane. Then you get to him in his, his little archaeology place, sort of establishing him there again. And then him going to this sort of bar scene where there's a little bit of the love. And then it goes back to action. And that sort of cycle continues where you get a little bit of adventure, archaeology, action, love interest. Rewatching it, I think I have a lot more respect for how that movie was made and just especially how well it was paced. Pretty much everything you said I thought was spot on. I think narrative might be a little on the weaker side because it puts in the steps to fuel his rivalry with Belloc. I wasn't too invested in it. All of the character dynamics, whether they're super developed or not, they feel kind of authentic and it gives you a sort of sense of a lived in world that Indiana Jones has been doing this for a long time. This is not his first rodeo he's been around the block he's been with marion before everything feels like there's this history without me feeling like hey i missed a movie or there's some sort of prequel that they need to make no i i know everything i need to know another thing that i, I have to say about this movie is that uh in tone it's a lot 
goofier that that I remembered. I was gonna say the same thing. I didn't. I didn't go back into this movie realizing it's sort of a comedy movie most of the time. You probably get more into that in action, but every action scene is comedic. Yeah, it's it's a goofier adventure romp. But the other thing that I can really say is the adventuring aspect of this movie, more so than even the action, is I would say its strongest point. There's few franchises out there that capture the adventuring spirit more than Indiana Jones. Bridge of the Lost Ark's got pretty good pacing. I like it. I thought it was engaging and narrative's pretty good. You know, he's got to stop the Nazis from taking over the world. He's crazy relic. I just think it's pretty cool. I found that I really liked the ending of that movie. It embodies that kind of just crazy attitude towards storytelling that doesn't happen anymore. I love when they open the arc and it finally comes time to do that. Just how completely unhinged it is. It goes crazy. People's faces are melting off. It's it shows, wild. First of all, it depicts angels. So it does that depiction. That turns them into ghosts, basically, with this terrifying visage. And then, yeah, they keep melting and they get struck by lightning. Them getting struck by lightning is, it feels like it's straight out of the Bible. It reminds me a lot of this one Greek myth where there's the guy who tried to steal the fire from the gods. And, mm -hmm. you know, since he got to see the fire of the gods or whatever, he ended up suffering for that. He's trying to obtain something that isn't meant for him. And you see that a lot at the ending of Indiana Jones, where Indy realizes, hey, whatever's going on is not for us as mortal beings. We're not supposed to see this. We need to resist that. From a, just a narrative perspective, maybe you can enlighten me. Uh, cause I, this is one thing I was confused about. Do we know why like Indiana Jones knew to close his eyes or is that just like a hunch? <laughs> I, I, I was like, like, why does he, how does he know how to do that? And I'm like, I guess he just knows. I was going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> I, I, I rewinded. I don't know. I rewinded and I tried to watch it back and I'm like, he just knew. He's like, yeah, I don't know how he knew. Like, it's like, is he just see machines walking out? And he's like. It's well, possible maybe... I missed something. Yeah. I'll, it, I'll give it that much it, credit. Hey, guys, in the comments, if you know why Indiana Jones closed <laughs> his eyes, he knew to do that and tell to the point where he's like telling Mary, you need to close your eyes. Like he was sure he's like, this is the solution. He's got it. He worked out. It could be that he's just wrong and they didn't kill him because he's not a Nazi. I also like the very, very ending. It shows them putting the arc in probably yeah, Area 51 or something equivalent. And he just it pans out and you see just these hundreds and thousands of other artifacts that the government has that they've taken. Well, that does actually touch on another thing and that and just also the movie, the movie itself. Up until the point at the end, there really was nothing supernatural. It's a realistic movie, but mostly yeah. aside yeah. from being ridiculous comedic. yeah but it's like oh it's all plausible it could happen yeah In the end i like that it took a stance i know people that have watched that movie and they're like whoa this is too out there because i grew up with it it's like i've never seen it any other way i just remember it being there's a supernatural thing that happens at the end and i never remember thinking anything of it so i think it's a valid criticism if you feel like it's just crazy out of left field but you know, that in and of itself, I don't have a problem with. Is there people who really don't like that? Because it's tied to Indiana Jones, the supernatural aspect of it and solving that mystery. It's it just some people prefer grounded takes on things. And it's when you do something where you're you're leading an audience to being like, oh, this is grounded the whole time. And then you just randomly flip on the end. Some people don't like that. Moving on to Top Gun, it's a little different from Raiders in tone. Well, I would say that Raiders is sort of a somewhat campy action adventure film top gun is actually more of a drama romance action film the events of top gun are still very engaging maverick is a pretty good protagonist him sort of having this chip on his shoulder wanting to prove himself i think is is really well done i think the the central story especially of you know spoiler alerts goose dies tragically and, and he dies sort of randomly sort of some sort of accident happened in training and he died and Maverick's upset about it. It shakes him through the rest of the movie. And it being like this curveball out of nowhere is actually pretty interesting to just the nature of life and how something like that can just happen in a blink of an eye. The one thing that I remembered when I watched this movie when I was very young as a child is when Goose died, I was like, but why? Why'd he die? Like, that's not fair. It was a tough lesson. It's probably why I didn't like it as a kid is life's not fair and things happen. 
especially when you're doing this type of dangerous work. And I think that they were able to tie that event to what ends up actually happening with Maverick's dad, where, you know, his dad ended up dying and then Viper kind of had to, to deal with that. And it's the idea that you're going to lose people that, you know, not only in life, but especially in the military. And you have to find a way to sort of push past that and move on. And I think that worked really well. I would say my biggest complaint with the Top Gun story, the relationship was a little bit undercooked and potentially problematic. The fact that um, he's he's sleeping with his teacher. It's a little bit, um, hmm. Yes. Kind of sus. It is entirely problematic. Yes. He's got extra points. I, I don't know. Like, I'm just saying if you... How is he going to so, win Top Gun I, I, without I believe a real that advantage? I don't think it loses points for me necessarily uh, because... It's realistic. No, no, it's not what I was going to say at all. <laughs> I've I've seen it happen. Well, it has happened, but I just mean that it's okay to make movies and write stories about these things and these kinds of relationships to just show that kind of perspective. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's an inappropriate workplace relationship because if you sleep with the teacher, they'll give you good grades. So yeah, and that's not a good thing because he's fighting to defend our nation. <laughs> yeah. So it's slightly problematic. <laughs> I think it does hurt the narrative because yeah. I don't know what their relationship does to support the narrative much. I don't know what, what much Charlie was doing to actually help him get past everything. It's Sleeping with him to take his mind off. I, I, I guess. guess I, because that's all I got. It, there was oh, a okay. scene. Okay. There was a scene <laughs> before she left forever where Goose had died and she was like, yo, you're a loser if you quit. I guess I think the only problem with that, which I can agree with you, is that so she did do something. Like a couple people told him that already, and so it didn't necessarily. Well, need not to be as hurt. not as like sh not as as laid out as she. But did. that's true. I, I I can I can grant that. I think her purpose I would give her is that she's very attractive. People like to see attractive people together, and she, they kind of incorporate her in the narrative, so it makes sense. And it does lead to some admittably funny moments, like when. He sees her for the first time yeah. as the teacher and he's like, oh, <laughs> no. And then but it also kind of shows to the confidence of Maverick where even though he knows she's the teacher and he could just be embarrassed, it's no, he doesn't back down because that's the type of person he is. He's like, no, I'm doubling down. I'm going for her now. And then her being like, oh, come to my house after. And then he's like, I'm busy, woman. And then he just goes <laughs> off like, I'm oh, I'm here. Exactly. Yeah, the girl, it was just there as like, it felt more like the reward, the, the cherry on top for Maverick. But other than that, like, I don't really have too much of a problem with it. And and once again, that that last action scene where he he's flying and he's saving Iceman from certain doom and he's kind of overcoming his lack of confidence. And he's like, talk to me, Goose, holding the dog dog tags or whatever. I thought that was was a very powerful scene and it was mm. the best action scene in the movie probably because it's the only action scene in the movie really okay. <laughs> but <laughs> it, i disagree with it that was, we'll, we'll, get we'll, later. we'll get to that later but i i did think that that was a really great way just as indiana jones is a great climax i thought the top gun climax might have been even better in some ways and it really sort of cemented everything that the movie was going for and trying to do and apparently a lot of people in the 80s agreed because naval recruitment went up like 300 percent or something after top gun came out yeah, I, I bet it did it, it it's there people wanted to sleep with their instructors people <laughs> wanted to learn how to fly planes they're like this is the life I want to be part of Top Gun. And even I wish that I could have been part of Top Gun after watching the movie just a little bit. That's more or less my thoughts on the narrative of Top Gun. Does anyone have anything else they want to comment on Top Gun? Yes, we've touched on it, but have you noticed how horny this movie is? I don't know if you noticed that watching this movie. So the Fob and I were talking, movie's really gay at times. Yeah, that it's, too. It's, it's with the guys like, I want somebody's butt. I want it now. I got it. Yeah, and it's just like sometimes you're looking at Maverick, looking at Iceman, and you're like, I'm, I'm feeling a little something beyond the platonic <laughs> relationship here. That's the real purpose the instructor was there for us, so people didn't think Maverick was gay. <laughs> that's that's, that's a, right. It is a Navy movie. Facts. You want to know the only difference? <laughs> is the Navy in real life is 200% more horny. <laughs> hey, there, yeah, there you go. I, 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 could, I, I guess I can't agree. I would know you. You that's more of your I, your field. I would say. It, believe me, it is. <laughs> so, 
accurate. Let's get into scoring. We're gonna start with Raiders of the Lost Ark. I gave Raiders of the Lost Ark an eight because it's really solid pacing and narrative. I like it. I am giving Raiders of the Lost Ark an eight out of 10 because I believe the narrative to be really fun, engaging, the pacing is great, but it's lacking depth and substance in a lot of areas, which is why I'm going to dock two points. I am giving Raiders a nine because I think I liked everything about the narrative. It was paced extremely well. It properly fulfilled the narrative of an adventure story. Now let's score Top Gun. I'm giving Top Gun a seven because I feel like, um, you know, it's really solid, but I feel like it could have been a little, a little better, a little tighter. I am giving Top Gun a surprising nine out of 10 because I actually was very invested in the drama and the character relationships. And I thought it really came together at the end. Uh, the only reason I'm docking a point is because I felt the relationship romance aspect was severely undercooked. I'm giving a Top Gun a less surprising seven <laughs> for narrative and pacing. In that it is still very good, just so that I think it could have been paced better. I think it's maybe missing an action scene earlier on. The flawed romance is sort of plaguing the narrative consistently. For round two, we're going to get into characters and acting, which is worth five points. To start with Raiders, we obviously got to talk about Indiana Jones. Uh, he is such an iconic character in cinema, and not only that, video games, because my real introduction to Indiana Jones is actually the, the Lego Indiana Jones video game on the Wii. I have a lot of childhood memories attached to that. Unbelievable. I know you're not a fan. Unbelievable. I know you don't like it, but <laughs> I like it. I have a ton of nostalgia for it. Is it good? I don't know who cares. Point is, the thing that I learned watching this movie is I hear a lot of these these critics nowadays when they're reviewing the newer Indiana Jones movie being like, oh, not my Indiana Jones. He's all cynical and cranky and he's a goofball. And I'm like, have you watched Indiana Jones <laughs> Raiders before? of the Lost Ark? Indiana Jones is such a goober. And I actually really like how they introduce him in this sort of they're not showing his face. They're hiding it away. And then you it shows it for the first time. You're like, man, this guy's so cool. He's a cool guy. And it's he seems like he's knowledgeable. And so they establish that aspect of Indiana Jones is knowledgeable and he knows what he's doing. And then as soon as he swaps the sandbag with the little artifact, the golden artifact, he's got that cheeky grin like, yeah, I did it. And then immediately goes like, makes that like oh ah. face when he realizes it starts going down and then the movie begins yeah and he just all of that coolness goes out the window he's running like 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 a six-year-old girl who's scared and when he's like Daniel, the Get it up! It establishes this like really interesting balance of the character of him being legitimately cool and just being a total goober <laughs> klutz he's kind of uh, as a character reference he reminded me a ton of ash from the evil dead franchise this guy who's kind of cool but he's also he's a totally klutz. out of his realm but i think that quality to the character makes him more endearing because he's flawed he's not perfect he's made mistakes obviously he low-key abandoned uh marion before the movie even started in some previous history and that's another thing i can say i mentioned this in narrative everyone feels well developed it feels like everyone's lived their lives it doesn't feel like their stories began in this movie which isn't always a good thing but in this case, I thought it felt very good. I think you bring up a really good point. I never thought about how when he t steals the idol, the movie kind of does a heel turn on how it's portraying him. While he is pretty cool, it's completely out of his realm. He yeah. is first and foremost the professor and him going on these adventures. is He's not always prepared for these situations. He's not a soldier. And it, I think that also plays to his his love of archaeology. And I think you can really feel his love of history um indiana jones is pretty dope mm. he, he's cool a little goofy sometimes but at the end of the day he's good at his job ish <laughs> good. So. ish is the, the the important part also since we attribute acting to this category yeah we should get harrison it. ford does an amazing job he is indiana his, jones yeah he embodies him pretty well his facial expressions are so on point throughout this whole movie <laughs> and it, just yeah he brings just the energy to every scene and that 
is it's carrying the movie definitely i think moving on to some supporting characters uh there's obviously marion she does a good job just being kind of a a fun charismatic presence that sort of pushes against you know the typical role of a female a lot in these these um and older movies she's yeah, i like that she has her own sort of characterization beyond just being the female lead like she has her own personality traits and she properly calls indy out on some things that he's done you can tell that she's got a chip on her shoulder because of whatever events transpired between her and indy and i i think her introduction scene is really cool her just having sort of like this drinking match with some big old guy to show that she's kind of tough as nails but they also do a good job showing that you know She's not perfect and she still needs help, but she's going to try her best. His rival, Belk, I completely forgot about this character's existence <laughs> and I forget about him every single time. I'm like, oh yeah, that guy. I kind of like him. When he's there, he, like again, he brings that seasoned aspect. You can tell that him and Indy have known each other. They're acquaintances. I think their rapport is often good. Like he as an antagonist is interesting. Wouldn't say he's particularly memorable. Sala, actually as sort of, a buddy character i thought he did a, a good job supporting indy mm -hmm. he his rapport with indy was really funny moving on to top gun once again maverick is a really great protagonist him sort of being really confident always keeping an eye on goose caring about his people but pushing the boundaries it brings a rebellious nature that i think is infectious for most young men especially that fly by <laughs> he does it twice the guy spills coffee on him or something like that was so great and you see him like cracking a smile the whole time. He does an ma amazing job as the character of Maverick, him sort of losing his lifelong friend Goose and having to contend with that, overcoming that. I think that was really powerful. The ending really cements his character, finding a way to move past death and trauma, which is something that's going to affect us all at some point to some degree. However, this is one of Tom Cruise's early movies. I don't think he gave a Tom Cruise gave a bad performance at all but you can tell that he's he's still learning the trade he's not quite there yet there was a couple lines that felt like they were falling flat he definitely did an admirable job but it wasn't the like magnificent performance from a more seasoned harrison ford who just killed it i didn't think going into this he was gonna be i wasn't thinking of him as contending with harrison ford doesn't feel fair going back to it i think in a lot of moments i'm like it's more close than i thought it would be though yeah, I, I think, think yeah. I go think ahead. his acting is actually pretty good. I think he did a great job throughout the entire movie. Uh, this is a real guy. He's just a real cocky dude, and I feel like he did a great job portraying that attitude. Yeah. And so for most of for most of it, I I thought he portrayed the arrogance very well, and I thought that's what it was all gonna be. And for most of it, it is. And then when he loses Goose and then it starts to dawn on him and everything, the reality of it all, I think it's mainly, there's a scene in the bathroom when he's shaving, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that scene is when he did a much better job acting with his face and it was a different aspect of the character, broadening out that performance. And I thought that part was very, very good. At that point in the movie, he just continues to do a great job of playing this character who used to be at the top of the world and now he's just hit the bottom of the barrel and he doesn't know what to do and he's scared for the first time and i can agree with that i, I want to clarify i did not think he gave a bad performance i think he gave a great performance i'm probably looking at this with you know from, from a hindsight perspective of i've seen tom give really really good performances where i like with harrison ford i can't imagine him doing a better performance than indiana jones because that was one of his greatest performances tom cruise i can just tell is a little younger here and he's not quite as good as he is now that doesn't mean he gave a bad performance i think he did a great job i'm not saying he's arnold schwarzenegger here he did a good job and i agree with you and you can definitely say Maverick is a deeper character than Indiana Jones. But like in our Predator conversation, deeper doesn't necessarily mean better, but he's got more depth and he's also got a cockiness and arrogance to him. I, I think he's a little bit of a sensitive baby. There's times I'm like, bro, come on, man. She like criticized his performance or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, that's it. I'm crying and running away, which did lead to a really funny scene <laughs> when she drives and almost causes a multi-car collision. And yeah. it's like, Jesus Christ. 
and you think I'm reckless? That was a good scene, I'll admit. One interesting thing that they do is his character arc takes center stage because the movie sets you up to think he wants that plaque at the end to prove he's the best. And that turns from him just wanting the plaque to prove he's the best to being like, we just want to see Maverick get back in the saddle and be effective. Like, it's kind of interesting how they just brush over the fact that, yeah, Iceman's the best student. That lost complete focus and it shows that there's more important things in life than getting a particular trophy. Also, like in Indiana Jones, the character dynamics in this movie, save a couple, which I'll get into later, are pretty good. Maverick Goose, Maverick Viper, Maverick Iceman. I don't have too much to say about Iceman. He's, he's a cool kind of rival. I like a lot of the things he says to Maverick. The thing that I liked, especially rewatching it, is he doesn't actually seem to hold any malice in his heart towards Maverick. It's just he genuinely believes what he's doing is dangerous because of how much he pushes the rules. And you can really see that when he talks to him, he's almost doing it from a mentorish state, but he's also young and brash. So he's, you know, a little bit arrogant as well. So I like that about Iceman. Uh, underrated character, I think, that I'd completely forgotten about was, was Viper, the more seasoned veteran who flew with his dad. You can see that he has a soft spot for yeah. Maverick and that he, he wants to help him, but he's also stern with him when he needs to be. And when he decides to reveal classified information to Maverick to tell him what happened to his dad, help turn him around. But he's also like, I'm here to just tell you the truth and hope you can do the right thing. And as a sort of fatherly role, especially when you see that Maverick sort of missing that, I think he fills that void in an interesting way. Goose is a good character, great foil to Maverick, it's tall and lanky. Tom Cruise is, sh is short and more stout. They're both very friendly, but he's got the family life, you know, Maverick's sort of a wanderer, kind of sleeping with multiple women until this movie. Uh, I think Goose is a really great foil and he's so likable and lovable that when he dies, it's so sad. You're like, oh, he's gone. Yeah. Uh, that aspect is played up really well. And then uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the love interest, she's mid. Not a very developed character at all. And it feels like she was thrown in not to compliment the story itself, but just to get butts and seats because audiences like romances. And I think they integrated her well enough into the story. When you really peel back the layers, there's nothing to her characters other than she's just enthralled with Maverick and, you know, attached to him and, and, uh, unhealthy relationship between student and teacher. So that's all I have to say about her. Uh, yeah, I mean, at first she has, I mean, in the first meeting, she has that kind of subtle attitude mm -hmm. towards it, and she's good at enticing him in that way. Once they meet up in the class and has that reveal, that side of her just kind of dies out after that. She doesn't have that tact anymore, and she doesn't have, I hate to say, but she doesn't really have many personality traits. Yeah. It just... Aside from just, yeah, just having the whole focus be on Maverick and... When you're doing a romance, that's only one side of it. and They're not building to the other side at all. Like, he's not supporting her in any ways. So... Yeah, it just felt like it had, like, the depth of, like, like a plot. And, <laughs> and, and fortunately, that's not enough for me to uh, give her a pass. I know you... I mean, I feel like that says more about Maverick's character, though. He doesn't really treat her as an equal, almost. Because at the end of the day, he just wants her because she's attractive she's beautiful even though she even though it's like a little kind of forbidden the relationship you could say forbidden fruit you know he's going for it because he's like i'm gonna finish what i started he so, sees her as more of a prize yeah she's more of a prize than like a actual love interest in my opinion you see i think what you're actually saying is that there is something there in the sense that maverick sort of seeing her as a prize well then she then he starts getting more into but then, her but then he realizes she's maybe more than that and i think that is an interesting yeah. avenue i don't think that the movie really like i said undercooked they didn't really develop that angle you can sort of look try to read into that and find it if you try hard enough and i think it's impressive that you did that well, I don't think everything has to be on a surface level. Yeah, but it, it, it felt more like uh, they didn't, that's not really what they were going for. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Let's get to scoring. We're going to start with Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I'm giving Raiders of the Lost Ark four. I think the characters are all pretty good, but I think I would like to see a little bit, a little bit more from maybe the antagonist side. It is a little underwhelming. I am giving Raiders of the Lost Ark, a four. 
because Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford's performance of Indiana Jones is just so iconic and I can't imagine anyone playing it. However, the side characters do leave something to be desired overall. In characters and acting, I will give Raiders a four, four across the board. Harrison Ford definitely had an iconic and outstanding performance. Previously stated, I think the villains could have used a combination of a little bit more convincing acting and then a stronger dynamic or character motivation maybe. Now let's score Top Gun. I'm giving it a five. I think all the characters pretty much are great. I am giving Top Gun a four. While I think that Indiana Jones is more iconic and gives a better performance than Tom Cruise did as Maverick, I still really like Maverick. He's a more in-depth character and overall I like the side characters a little bit more in Top Gun so I'm going to have it balance out. I feel the same, so I also gave Top Gun a four. Like you said, very good characters, a strong performance from Tom Cruise, the side characters were good. I do just think the romance had drained it a little bit from what the characters could have achieved. Moving on to round three, we have action sequences and choreography, which is worth a total of 15 points. Starting with Raiders, a lot of the action is mixed with adventure sort of elements, but I think that that doesn't mean that they're bad at all. And, and Kyle commented on, and I'll let him expound, expand upon it further, but I, I think, yeah. Going back to this movie, I remember there were some funny things that happened in this movie. I didn't remember every action scene being funny, but every action scene is funny in some way. I think that actually adds to the movie because it keeps up the fun energy, definitely. Pretty much once he finds them carrying the Ark and Marion, that's pretty serious. And then beyond that, it's 100% serious. But that's all played very well. So like we said before with the narrative, it's ridiculous, it's over the top, but it's still fun, and it's it's grounded enough to where it doesn't bother me at all. But every action scene was very fun. Like, it had something very enjoyable about it. There's a great energy to all of the scenes where, you know, action sequences in this movie. I, I mean, him running away from the boulder and jumping through cobwebs, and then he looks up and there's this whole army surrounding him. Such a great moment. He's fighting all these guys in that desert that one time and then like this big old dude shows up and he's like give me a second okay he's like i'm coming like yeah. that was really really funny this is the scene that i've had to analyze more than once in my film classes in college the scene where he's on the horse and he's he's chasing down the trucks and he has to like whip whip it to like stay and he like goes under the he truck and, dragged and everything yeah that super iconic sequence and really well choreographed it's probably the best one it is the best one i agree and one thing I will say as a little bit of a knock is this movie unfortunately suffers from 80s action choreography. No one is safe uh, in this tournament. Uh, some of the fight scenes with him punching, it looks super fake, super corny, not realistic at all. Maybe that's why it's good to be a comedic take on it. <laughs> yeah, it does add a little bit to the slapstick nature. And if that's the route you want to go, I, I think that's fine. Me personally, it did detract in quite a few of the hand to hand confrontations, but I wouldn't say it like nosedives the movie. You can still watch this now and be like, this is incredibly entertaining. It doesn't age super poorly. I think the action's pretty fun. Obviously, I really liked the boulder scene. That's a scene I remember from when I was a lot younger. So it's always fun watching that again, getting nostalgia back. Um, I also thought it was funny that there's always something that like goes wrong. Like whenever he grabs something like an artifact, for example, like Balak is there. He's just like, yeah, it's mine, buddy. Yeah, there's and there's something that it's like a little recurring bit that Belloc always seems to be one step ahead of Indiana Jones. And, and that's pretty funny, too. Just like every time and, you think it's he's like Indiana like, oh, Jones is collecting artifacts for him, basically, and just personally <laughs> handing it to him. The stunt work is super good. I, I never found myself being like, oh, that's not Harrison Ford, you know, and I'm, yeah. there's times where I could see they're like not showing his face. I'm like, well, it's probably not him if I was really, really paying attention, but it never distracted. And if I wasn't analyzing it the way I was trying to, I would have been fine with it. Moving on to Top Gun. It's really, really hard to rank this one in particular because realistic Choreo choreography is like planes yes how do we how do we, how do i planes it, I, I think <laughs> i think I, I consider the uh training sequences action sequence personally and i think if you want to go that route i i can agree but 
I will say the good news about Top Gun is it does it, it actually I know I just said no one's safe from the 80s choreography. Top Gun is safe because it doesn't even try. There's not even like a bar fight to yeah. speak of. And so in that sense, I can say that Top Gun is actually aged pretty good in its action sequences. It's all practical. The choreography aspect of it is actually more editing related, I yeah. would say, because all of the jets they use, at least to my knowledge, look like real jets. I never thought saw something that was like, oh, that's crabby green screen. You can tell that they were taking a lot of jets footage and kind of combining it, create a cohesive action scene with they jet footage. And really did a good job. Most of the time, it's a little hard to follow for me. Not a planes guy. Yeah, but I think the last scene especially did a good job of engrossing me and then making me aware of what is going on and where they are. I, I was following it a lot better then. I think that was a lot better choreographed. Yes, and especially because when it needed to be choreographed better and edited well, I think it actually did the job pretty good just because that last action scene which is really the only true action scene is incredibly gripping even though i kind of um, knew what happened uh oh at, back the up. Of, at the <laughs> beginning of the movie there was also an actual encounter with the enemy so i don't think we should be brushing that off there's a couple enemy planes that show up but one of their pilot friends they basically get uh they get locked on by, by missiles introduces maverick's cocky character he does an invert he goes inverted so he can give the middle finger to the enemy pilot while they're flying through the cockpit window after that you know you're like the guy is basically about to crash because he's so shaken up and then maverick goes out of his way to even though he's on low fuel to help the guy this seems also important into introducing how they get in the top gun because the best pilot had to retire because he was so shaken up maverick and goose were the next best team right which i also just realized is great foreshadowing what could potentially happen to maverick him losing the edge yeah i think that's a great scene uh i completely spaced on it so i'm glad that you brought it up like i said the action scenes are very are slim in a lot of way it's a lot of them practicing and training and i do think the jet footage is impressive and i did find myself invested to me it's it's not entertaining and frequent enough like it is in indiana jones to even justify calling it like a full-fledged action movie in some sense while i think that last action scene is super iconic and we'll get a ton of points for that it it does lose a lot that, that there's barely any action scenes in the movie but the ones that are in there i'm telling you you should good. be considering the training sequences as action scenes they're literally action scenes just I do, because but people I think it could still use more i guess scenes, but i also but it's also a I'm drama so they have to put the drama a section into it because it's an action drama at the end of the day i agree i think it still could have used maybe one more scene yeah, maybe because there's one some more, there's but... sometimes i think there's at least one point in the movie where they talk about what happened off screen and i'm like i really wish they'd have just shown me that sure. part of the training but I, I did attribute that to narrative and pacing i, I so. just i think that we should be considering the training sequences of action scenes because i don't know why you wouldn't i would have I action think, is going on even if it's not people dying or being in danger and like i said i don't think it hurts the narrative like i gave the narrative a nine i give it the highest score because i think that the narrative is the strongest part it's just when it comes to the action scenes, as Kyle said, I think it really could have used one more, whether that was like a tight knit, like training experience where they're shooting each other, like, or not shooting, but locking onto each other. Or if it's an encounter with the enemy, either way, one more would have been good. I think that would have made me feel a little bit better. Still not terrible. It left me a little bit lacking. However, the jet stuff, super cool, liked it a lot. Let's move on to scoring. We're going to start with Raiders of the Lost Ark. For Raiders of the Lost Ark, I'm giving it an 11. Seems it is a bit low, but I wasn't the biggest fan of how the action scenes were executed. Um, while I did really like some of them, that's where most of the points are coming out. I felt a lot of them were just a little too unrealistic, goofy, maybe, I don't know. I'm gonna give Raiders a 13 out of 15 because i think there's a lot of great stuff a lot of spectacle added to it choreography kind of brings it down a peg and it is more on the adventure side so it is lacking a distinct amount of traditional action i in action sequences and choreography gave raiders a 13. I'm, I'm docking points because yeah i mean some of the choreography with punches specifically is not good but 
I love it so much, I cannot go lower than 13. It's just, it's pure fun, and it's very entertaining to watch. If you cannot be good at action, you can at least be funny. <laughs> All right, so prop gun, here at 13, mainly just because I was always really invested in the plane scenes. I am giving Top Gun a 9 out of 15. He's giving you the evil eye. <laughs> for action. Uh, simply because while this, the action scenes that were in it were really well executed, there's like two. And, and, more and, than two and, action scenes. and they're very, very infrequent uh, to the point where it's borderline not even ah, you bro there's more than <laughs> two action scenes however many bro hey we're not in the debate section anymore ah, you <laughs> well uh in action sequences despite being very different from raiders i gave top gun a 13 <laughs> because of the action scenes it has i already docked points for having fewer in another category he does a pr very good job of giving it high energy and for the most part very still high stakes combats and very cool shots and very cool sequences of combats with how planes work i only docked a few points because in the earlier action scenes it's a little harder to tell what's happening but the the last scene was phenomenal and definitely also remedy like that. i like how like it feels very realistic around it yeah, it does a great job of not feeling like cheesy 80s. I'm uh, great enough to get above a nine. Okay, bro. Moving on to round number four, we have cinematography and special effects, which is worth 10 whole points. Oh yeah. I'm gonna start with Raiders as we've been doing so far. While I can commend its ambition for 1981, a lot of the stuff that they were trying to do does not hold up. Uh, Kyle and I were talking before the <laughs> podcast. There's, it goes from this actually really great shot where it's a silhouette of Indiana Jones and this orange background to the most obviously fake background that maybe I've seen in, in one of these movies in this bracket. It was not, it was, it was really bad. The end scene, while I think it actually is still cool, there are some times where you can tell of like, mm, those effects don't hold up maybe as well. There's a random plane at some point where I was like, wow, that is a fake plane. That is not a real plane in the, in the sky, especially, and that's especially tough comparing it to Top Gun where they use real planes which is not a fair comparison. The practical effects on the other hand, really solid. The scene at the end where the people's faces are like melting off is iconic for a reason. And it is still holds up to me. I really, wish Hollywood can bring back some practical effects. In overall cinematography, not too much to say other than the framing was really good in this movie. The color grading was really well done. It's 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 so perfect. It's like uh, it's fun, but those special effects date the film in a, in a noticeable degree. So the thing about that scene, that stormy scene at nighttime, it don't look good but I really like it. This is a very specific niche that it fulfills for me. Since it is a movie about a religious artifact, it feeds in really well to how a lot of old movies about Bible stories like Exodus have had really bad effects of depicting powers on high. Doesn't they, look, they look similarly bad, but I love how they look. It's almost like <laughs> Spielberg's paying an homage to like Ten Commandments or something that came out like 30 years prior. Seen like so, Make no mistake, I'll be docking points for special effects, but... In your heart. I have to give it credit for being absolutely insane at times. <laughs> and just for the stylistic approach of, like, killing the Nazis with this streak of lightning. I think a better looking version of this fulfills that image of what it's going for. Conceptually, it's really cool. Exactly. The cinematography is real good. The angles, the editing's actually pretty good. But the special effects are god-awful. To be fair, it's made in the 80s, but... 81 to be... Precise. I mean, Aliens was also made in the 80s, and the special effects were pretty good for the most part, other than, like, two scenes. I think the practical effects are pretty good. Uh, the blood did seem a little unrealistic, but... Yeah, the blood did have a, a ketchup-like quality to it at times. Moving on to the cinematography and special effects in Top Gun. This, Go. I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to clean house. <laughs> yeah, uh, top, this is the Top Gun category. This... The cinematography in Top Gun is once again just on another level. I think Top Gun looks really good, and the fact that it's an 80s movie 
that doesn't have any bad special effects or, or like, choreography. Impressive. The Jets is actually amazing. The fact that they have it flying up there, like in it looks realistic because it is realistic and you have to give Top Gun, Top Gun all of the credit in the world for doing that. But even outside of the Jet stuff, the grading is really good. They got a lot of nice color usage without it feeling like over the top like when we're in that like blue and red room that looks really cool and i don't know if that's how they actually look but i didn't care and i was believing in it so it had a lot of visual variety and and when i said the framing was good in indiana jones it was even better in top gun i have absolutely no complaints on top gun cinematography not even like one little nitpick I could say editing, yeah, but it's that's what I was thinking. Editing at times, but that's really just for the jet sequences, and, and it's and, not really that bad. And it's really not bad. I wouldn't dock any points for editing. Cinematography in Top Gun, obviously phenomenal, very iconic shots for good reason. Special effects, they don't. They don't it's so weird calling them special effects. They're not really special. It's effects. just real. It's <laughs> just real. They attached a camera to a jet and flew the jets <laughs> real life scenarios is what those were but yeah I, I mean they're indistinguishable from reality like the camera work was amazing um and you're getting really cool angles of like during the dog fights you're getting cool angles of inside the plane and outside the plane there's some scenes where or a scene where it's like orange sky and it's like the kind of like sh almost silhouettes of the p planes and that looked really good it very pretty I, I thought it looked really cool with the planes moving and stuff no no complaints yeah well to even add on to what you were saying about the camera angles it's a lot of them felt very modern um yeah. like yeah. It's like for eight like when they had it every like time it's, it's on the plane or in the plane it's indistinguishable from modern yeah it's it's for me. yeah i 100 percent agree like they did such a good job let's go to scoring we're gonna start with raiders of the lost ark i'm gonna give it a five the cinematography was pretty decent the practical effects were okay like the special effects were just so so bad i am going to give raiders a seven out of 10. It could have maybe been a nine if the special effects were like significantly better, but because they're not, it's gotta be docked two points going down to a seven. All things considered, I will give Raiders a seven on cinematography and special effects, considering that the cinematography was very good and the practical effects were very good. The special effects are holding it back a little bit on a lot of parts. Let's move on to Top Gun. I'm giving Top Gun a 10 out of 10 for cinematography and special effects, mainly because uh, basically all the shots are really good. The editing is pretty solid overall, considering what they you know were working with. Everything looked real and grounded, and I really believed that this, this these are planes. I am giving Top Gun a 10 out of 10 for some of the best cinematography I've seen in an 80s movie, but also for the fact that the special effects, air quotes there, super impressive with the jets. I never once felt like there was CGI because there wasn't. They really refined those jets. Super cool. Across the board then, Top Gun gets a 10 for cinematography and special effects. That's ah. real. <laughs> Facts. We're going to move on to round five, which is music and sound design with a total of five points available. Raiders of the Lost Ark has one of the most iconic soundtracks in all of cinema history, of course, done by none other than John Williams. It's really hard to do better than John Williams. He really he cooked, as the kids would say. He does a great job of having this adventurous feel, having such an iconic theme for Indiana Jones that you could probably talk, ask a five-year-old if they knew who it was, and even if they haven't seen the movie, they'd know it's Indiana Jones, and that's powerful considering the movie came out like 43 years ago or something, and I like that he decided to go orchestral for this soundtrack, as he always does. I will say, for me personally, I wouldn't say his music speaks to me although it's iconic because it's so brash and bravado and it really does fit the tone of this movie it comes off as a little too loud to me sometimes but i don't even think i would dock points for that element alone john williams carries this movie 
uh, because <laughs> without that soundtrack, this movie is just a really stupid movie that you're watching with your friends and laughing at. <laughs> but I think, honest, I really do think that his score is what is putting you in that world. It's sending you on that adventure with Indy, and the absolutely horrifying track when the arc is opened, like the beautiful thing it is at first, and then the way the music totally turns it around and turns it into something else, scar you as a child. <laughs> yeah, I, I was certainly was. It completely elevates what's happening. Every every point in the movie, this soundtrack is elevating what is happening. I'll touch on sound design too, because I think this is important since we. The standard we applied to Predator was that sometimes certain things shouldn't make a noise, but it's good that they make a noise because it's fun. That happens a lot in this movie. <laughs> yes. Just fun, just fun little sound effects, but I think it doesn't really take away from the experience for me. I mean, that whip sound effect is so iconic. It's so satisfying and it like, it's like, yes, it's, and once again, has that 80s crunch that I love so much. And as you said, there's plenty of other sounds in the movie that have that 80s crunch that 80s bite and i just i love it to death i just feel like a lot of times it's a little too too much for me with like the cheesy sound effects but it's not that bad um once again because it is like a goofy movie so it kind of fits the tone now time to talk about let me move on to top gun now this might be sacrilegious <laughs> watch your step buddy make fun of our favorite movie i swear to god now is john williams soundtrack for indiana jones a lot better than the sound top gun soundtrack probably maybe who knows but if you ask me which one i prefer <laughs> it's top gun baby all the uh, way no. <laughs> you know indiana jones it's got some iconic beats whatever does it have danger zone by kenny loggins no it doesn't i don't remember hearing that in Raiders of the Lost Ark? Well, as a huge Danger Zone fan, it's good, but it doesn't elevate the movie that much for me. I don't know. I That's feel... The vibe. I I will disagree with that, actually. I feel like with the tone of the movie, it's like this like high energy, just military, like operations are going on then he's got these this 80s like all these 80s songs going on like mighty wings and cause of top gun when i think of the military uh, or like the navy specifically i'm thinking of like these funny 80s songs i think the soundtrack in top gun is almost not only genre defining but like defines certain sects of the military <laughs> at this point because it's just that iconic and it's just that like ingrained in culture um the fob mentioned mighty wings i know it's the credit music and, and they do play a version of it throughout the movie sometimes but the song rocks man uh by, by cheap trick oh my goodness I, it sounds suspiciously like ken's theme from street fighter <laughs> at the beginning But, but uh, you're not ready for that conversation. We're not there yet. All right. Take my breath away. By I think Berlin won an Oscar. I don't. That's funny. I don't remember Raiders of the Lost Ark winning any Oscars for yeah. music. Yeah, that was strange. That must not be a good soundtrack. Him. Yeah. Kind of interesting. The soundtrack in Top Gun just elicits a vibe of like, you know, for lack of a better word, coolness, and it just gets you in the right mood. Do they play Danger Zone one too many times? probably nah. that doesn't exist what do you mean yeah yeah look i don't care man honestly i, I was into the movie they could have played it three more times there was only there's actually only one song that i i thought was kind of corny at times which was the one that won an oscar sometimes when they'd play that i was like like uh, hey buddy honestly this movie how about you win an back. oscar <laughs> <'Cause>, yeah <laughs> i'm working on it even more impressive to me is actually the sound design just how the cinematography and special effects really elevated Top Gun. I think the sound design does as well. They do a really, really good job getting the environmental sounds when they're in the jets, when they're switching from in the cockpit back outside of the jets. And it like you hear like the plane atmosphere. That was super well done. It's got 80s crunch, but it doesn't 
feel like cheesy at all. I think that's really good. And I think that sort of adds to the tone of the story. The sound design is super high quality and the music is super hype. Let's move into scoring. We're gonna start with Raiders of the Lost Ark. The Raiders of the Lost Ark, I'm giving it a four. Really good. I just personally didn't like some some of how the sound effects were used. There's a little bit too much for me. But everything else is really good, so four out of five. I am giving Raiders of the Lost Ark Despite my personal feelings, a five out of five. Literally your personal opinion. He what hates John Williams. Just, even though I just hate John Williams, but his soundtrack is iconic. It's timeless. It stood the test of time for sure. Everyone knows it. And the sound design is the 80s crunch that I have come to love and, and, and cherish. Greater soundtrack gets a five. John Williams carried this movie. It would not be iconic without him, I think. So for Top Gun music and sound design, I'm gonna give it a five out of five, mostly because I feel like it really fits the movie. And you know, there's nothing that's like too overdone in terms of sound effects. Or something. I'm giving Top Gun a five out of five for hype music and really high quality sound design. I am also giving Top Gun a five out of five. It was super, in love with the soundtrack, but it's good, it's complimentary, and then the sound design also, in its own right, helps to elevate that movie, ground it, and make it feel real. Let's move on to our final round, which is themes and motifs for a total of five points. Raiders of the Lost Ark, I wouldn't consider it a thematically strong movie. You got your typical good, versus bad americans versus the nazis i mean that's always kind of fun stuff i think the most interesting idea that the movie pokes at is how your ambition can kind of to seeing everything can sometimes lead you astray one of my favorite scenes one of my favorite interactions is when indiana jones can blow up the entire arc and belloc is like Okay, do it. Because I know you want to see this. That type of idea, I think, is really cool. And I think it also, as Kyle was saying, ties into a lot of the religious divine intervention motifs of the movie. And so from that sense, I think it's it's kind of cool. And you can analyze the movie from that lens if you so desire. I think the big important thing is that this is set in a very important time in history. It's not just Nazis so that he can beat up evil people and you don't have to care because it's fun because they're evil. How this revolves around themes is that the Nazis, of course, were book burners and they were trying to destroy all this old history and information. They want to sort of pervert history to assert their own ends and then indiana jones is this uh proponent of history and he's its savior he's trying to preserve it as much as he can i would say that's the big thematic twist between them is that it's not just good versus evil it's about history versus just people trying to change history to benefit themselves yeah i think that's a really interesting angle i hadn't thought about it that way and i'm glad you're able to bring an academic sort of lens to this sort of movie thought it was interesting how the government when they're hiring him were like yeah yeah i get this artifact we'll be sure to put it in a museum once you're <laughs> yeah, once see, once once you get it study it they're not yeah, so yeah. different from the other guys and, and then and then say? the second then the second he you know gets the artifact they're like oh yeah well we need to research this and we're gonna harvest his power basically ties back to the the consistent theme in all these 80s movies where it's like the power lies to get what they want whether it's like predator or aliens when Burke is like, he's like, oh, we're just going to kill these. Psych, we're studying it for power. But money. to be fair, should something like that be sitting around in a museum? Those things get robbed. Do you want Ben Stiller protecting your Ark of the Covenant? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think that's a, a good idea. Top Gun, this movie's chock full of themes. I agree. I think when we're talking about the more thematically strong movie, I have to edge Top Gun. I've talked about how Goose's death is just kind of real to life. People just die. It's seemingly random. You have to deal with that and overcome it and just how it kind of can affect you and the different ways you can sort of move past that. A lot of themes of ambition, trying to move so fast that you maybe endanger the people around you. I think there's also an interesting element of how the military covers things up and you seeing how that classified information sort of affected Maverick throughout his life. Even though his dad is a hero, you know, he's kind of 
said had the stink of m messing up on the job and that's really not what happened and, and, and yeah and it's because and because of the u.s messed up it's like they that's that's why it's classified because they screwed up and they want to cover up the fact that they screwed up so it's like so then they have to cover it up and then this guy's got a bad image even though he should be getting medals like the role that viper plays is the father figure and it shows what a difference that can make in someone's life just having that it gave him more of a backbone to deal with these issues not that he didn't have one just that it was it made him extra strong in dealing with this and he was able to move on past it sometimes when you're going through a tough time you really just can't do it alone you need to have someone who can help walk you through things and to not just wallow in self-pity and and guilt so really good stuff i thought that uh top gun was was super well done with its themes. Let's get to scoring. We're going to start with Raiders of the Lost Ark. For Lost Ark, for um, themes and motifs, I'm gonna do three out of five. Um, I was planning to do like two out of five, but Kyle kind of convinced me with all that cool lore. Raiders of the Lost Ark is gonna get a three. And the fob kind of stole my thunder here, but it was going to be like a two, but Kyle giving me the historical context. His speech checked you. Kind of made me think, huh, maybe there was a little bit more going under, going on under the surface. So kudos to Kyle. Uh, I'm right. I mean, he gets a three for <laughs> themes and motifs because I'm right. And yeah, it's those themes and motifs are there and they aren't unrecognizable or we're not completely impassioned from them. It's just that it's, it's still a little half-baked. So for Top Gun, I'm giving it a five. I thought all the themes were really solid and you know they worked well with the movie and I felt like it had a lot of important messages going on there. I'm giving Top Gun, despite not being as good as Rambo First Blood's themes, a five because for what it is, I think that it actually really enhances the genre and it's more than I would expect from an 80s action movie. I will give Top Gun a 4 out of 5 on themes and motifs because I'm a hater. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it does a lot of things very well. I still think there were a couple things that weren't completely tied up and then I think the grand scheme of the themes and motifs were a little lost on it. I don't know. The romance is kind of... Maybe affecting this too. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't know what they were cooking. The stain <laughs> on top there. We have done the math. We have tabulated the scores. Fob, share your scores for Raiders of the Lost Ark and Top Gun. Starting with Top Gun, got a 45 out of 50. Yes, sir. Wow. It's a pretty generous with... 45 out of 50. I, I wonder what you gave Raiders. Why, why, did, why did you start out with Top Gun? What did you give Raiders? I think we ended up with 35 out of 50. I gave Raiders of the Lost Ark a 40 out of 50, and I gave Top Gun a 42 out of 50. I gave Top Gun a 43 out of 50. I gave Raiders 41 out of 50. So it was a real close match, except for the fob. I, I really hope this video freaking isn't the one cooked. that pops off. Freaking, <laughs> freaking I really freaking hope this cooked top or uh, cooked Raiders of the I Lost Ark. This isn't the one that that pops so off. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get docs by some like 70 year old. I can't dollars. wait for there to be a new co-host on the next episode. 70 year olds on uh, Fox <laughs> people. Uncooked, bro. With the total of Raiders with 116 out of 150 and Top Gun with 130 out of 150, your winner. Today is Top Gun, which is actually kind of an upset. Good job, Top Gun. You move on to the next round. Our next episode, we are going to be looking at Conan the Barbarian versus Highlander. It's going to be a fun one. I hope you guys stick around. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We are a small channel. Every little bit helps whether it's a like, comment, or subscribing. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you, we will see you later.